It is Friday, January 18th, 2019. My name is Ashton Ellett, here with another installment of the Two-Party Georgia Oral History Project, sponsored by the Richard B. Russell Library at the University of Georgia. This is a special election 2018 episode. And joining me today is Jim Galloway, welcoming him back to the program. Jim is a three-decade vet veteran of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Four decade. Four decade now. We, we, we've reached a new milestone. I have to update my biography. Um, he is the lead political writer, founder and lead writer of the AJC's Political Insider blog, as well as the author of The Jolt, a daily morning blog post of gov Georgia government and politics. And he's a regular contributor to Georgia Public Broadcasting's Political Re Rewind with Bill Nygut. Thank you, Jim, very much uh, for taking some time uh, to talk politics this afternoon. Happy to be here. And thanks also to Georgia Public Broad Broadcasting for providing this space. Most of you will, many of you at least, will recognize this as the set of Political Rewind on GPB. So Jim, let's jump right into it. How did 2018 compare to, to some of the recent elections that you've covered for the AJC? It was a remarkable shift. Uh, I think that's the, that's the, the, the in, in, in the fortunes of Democrats, I think. Uh, they didn't win a statewide race, let's, let's be clear. Right. But, but clearly the, this, this promise of, of a democratic resurgence has begun. Uh, you, have, you had a, a, a very interesting shift in strategy by the woman at the top of the ticket, Stacey Abrams, uh, about how to go after votes. Uh, the, uh, the, the traditional uh, democratic formula of going for the middle uh, is uh, is is done and gone. She is. I mean, she proved she proved that you that you you can uh, uh, work on the intensity of your turnout and uh, and and produce something. Uh, I think the most significant thing that I saw is that in the in the 2016 cycle, or in the I'm sorry, in the 2014 cycle of of uh, the mid the midterm, the 2014 midterm. Uh, the average statewide Republican won by 57 percent uh, of the total vote. Of the total vote in a, in a general election, mm -hmm. Brian Kemp won with 50.2 percent of the total vote, and there and your average and 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 the, the the other statewide constitutional officers who were victorious, they won by only 53 percent. Mm. So I think I think there was one PSC race. Uh, uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm wrong. I, I, I'm, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. No. Yeah, the, the two PSC races, I think, Chuck Eaton, which went to a runoff, mm -hmm. and then Trisha Pridemore, which right. I don't have the number off the top of my head, probably 51% right. of the vote. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's take a step back, because you, you sort of mentioned briefly the outcome of, of the Democratic primary. Uh, the Republican primary, what was the conventional wisdom going into the race, sort of post-qualifying ending last last April through the, the, the very long runoff period. Right. The, 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 the traditional thinking going on the GOP side of the primary, it, it, uh, when, we're, when we're talking the gubernatorial race right, here, right. Is, is, is that Republicans wait their turn. And it was Casey Cagle's turn. He had, he had spent 12 years as lieutenant governor. He was first elected in 2006, beating Ralph Freed, and had hung into that office uh, since then, he he gave. Uh, there was uh, there, he, he in 2010 he jumped into the race and then jumped out uh, in uh, very very quickly. So so uh, so there was there was that. Uh, there were several other candidates. Uh, uh, help me with. There was Brian Kemp, obviously. Brian was, Kemp, uh, uh, the Hunter Secretary Hill. of State. I'm sorry, who? Hunter Hill. Hunter Hill, state senator. Uh, Michael Williams. Another state senator, and uh, Lindsey Clay Tippins. Clay Tippins, yes, Clay Tippins, a, a businessman. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the surprise there was that that was number one that uh, you had uh, Hunter Hill had a, was a veteran, mm -hmm. Army veteran, state senator out of Buckhead. Uh, he really didn't scratch. Clay Tippins was a first time uh, uh, runner. His his dad. It was a, a very influential, or no, his uncle was a very mm. influential state senator, uh, uh, Lindsey Tippins, right. uh, out of out of West Cobb County, 
uh, uh, he didn't really scratch at all. Michael Williams tried to do the Donald Trump thing. He tried to be the, the Donald Trump candidate mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> with, with the, the rhetorical excesses of that uh, um, in, in, in staging some, some, some very unfortunate protests and making some, some accusations against Casey Cagle that he never followed up on, uh, and he did very poorly. Mm -hmm. uh, subsequently uh, indicted and is now charged with insurance fraud. <laughs> that was, it was just before the primary, I think, uh, mm. the May, May primary. Uh, Kemp, however, what Kemp did was, and this is this is, and, and we can we can got in, we can get into it. Um, and this is where I think uh, the Kemp campaign, Donald Trump's campaign, and Sonny Perdue's campaign of two thousand two are all linked. Uh, if you go back to uh, 2002 and Sonny Perdue, uh, what he did was he picked out the counties that Roy Barnes had won in 1998. He was running, uh, this is the Roy Barnes re-elect year. Mm -hmm. um, he picked out the counties that Roy Barnes had won in 1998 that had also voted for Paul Coverdell in the U.S. Right. Senate race. Okay, None of those counties were in metro Atlanta. He, he adopted uh, a very, uh, uh, and we had the flag issue going there, mm -hmm. right? So we, he d adopted a, 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 a very overt strategy, a rural strategy of, of trying, to dri trying to drive the intensity right. of, of the rural vote. Uh, if you can't, if you don't have your numbers, trying to hold your own, split the difference in, in metro Atlanta, but drive up your numbers in, in white rural Georgia, okay? All right, and it worked for him, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, Think about uh, Donald Trump's 2016 campaign for president. What did he do? He focused on the rural areas, trying to drive up the intensity of white rural voters. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, this is where it gets interesting here. Okay? So, Trump gets into office. Who, are, who become his best friends? David Perdue in the U.S. Senate becomes the Trump whisperer, as we, we, we call it, uh, uh, is his most reliable ally in the Senate. Sonny Perdue, uh, cousin to David, the former governor, becomes the uh, becomes his sec uh, agricultural secretary. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, and so there's so so they're all thinking the same way. Okay, all right. Now let's get back to Brian Kemp. Uh, uh, Brian Kemp adopts a thoroughly rural strategy. You know. Uh, uh, Hardworking Georgians was his motto. That's that's a, that's a that's a loaded phrase there. That's a that's a phrase directed at people who have a grievance, who think they're not being treated right. Mm -hmm. It's it's a very familiar phrase used in Georgia politics. Yes, yes, and it means it means not the other guy. All right. So, but he it's 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 a completely rural strategy again. He's trying to drive up the intensity. And uh, and that's what happened. He beat Donald Trump's numbers, and in, 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 in where I know I'm pushing ahead to the the, the November election, uh, where he, he beat Donald Trump's numbers uh, uh, in in November in rural counties. I, I mean, he was getting 85, 90 percent of the vote in some in, in some counties. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, and that offset the terrible numbers that he had in Metro Atlanta. Did it surprise you? Again, going back to the, the primary, the margin of defeat for Casey Cagle or the margin of victory for Brian Kemp. No, that was, it, it, everybody saw, yeah, the margin surprised. Okay. Everybody saw what was happening. Right, the writing okay. was on the wall, it seemed and, like. And, and so, okay, so we have a May 20th primary, in your, and your gubernatorial candidates uh, on the Republican side are now Brian Kemp and, and Casey Cagle in a runoff. One of the most important things is 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 that Casey Cagle's numbers haven't shifted mm -hmm. since since January. He's got this lid on him, all right. Whereas Kemp has run some very very catchy uh, TV ads that really that 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 put him on the map for Republican voters. Okay, there's the the there was the ad where he's brandishing a shotgun. The Jake ad. The Jake ad. Funny thing about that. Okay. That was that was derivative, all right. <laughs> one of Brian Kemp's supporters, big supporters, in the, one of his few supporters in the Senate, in, in the state Senate, was Bruce Thompson. Okay, out of White, 
white Georgia, uh, up uh, uh, in, in Bartow County, all right? Bruce Thompson uh, is, is big, was big on Facebook, all right? And one of, his, one, of his, uh, one, one of the things that he liked to do when his daughter was in high school was put up the prom photo. And the ah, prom photo yes. showed his daughter, her suitor, and Bruce Thompson with a shotgun behind him. <laughs> okay? So, so Brian Kemp took that shotgun and put it in his TV commercial. Uh, uh, and this is where it gets interesting. This is where the year really starts to get interesting. Because in rural Georgia, everybody got that joke. I mean, it's it's. I mean, I mean, it's an old it, it, it's an old old joke. Mm -hmm. You know, shotgun weddings. Oh you know, sure. They're, 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 oh they're, sure. They're, it, but it started hurting him in Metro Atlanta, and because because you had suburban moms who are thoroughly uh, 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 who, who are thoroughly frightened about uh, these these school massacres. It wasn't too long after the the, the Parkland. Oh no shooting. no! It was only it was only three or four months after Parkland was in February on right. Valentine's Day. That's right, Valentine's uh, Day. The ad the 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 uh, the uh, shotgun ad was probably April. I'd have to go check the date. I, th but, I think that's right. I think that's right. Okay, so 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 it was it was it was a it was a a very interesting cultural fracture that we saw right there, uh, and and you could feel it happening. And I have, I, you know, I have come across a couple state legislators, Republicans, who told me that's the day that when they saw that ad, they knew they, they were toast in Metro Atlanta. They, their districts were in Metro Atlanta. Mm. They, they, knew, they, they, they knew what was happening here. And then, of course, you had the pickup ad where he's, he's got this huge pickup truck and, and, uh, and says, yeah, I need it to haul illegal immigrants back to the border. And then, the, yeah, I said that. Again, uh, Trumpish, but with a sense of humor that uh, that was a little bit more more wry than, right. than Trump expresses. Looking at at the Democratic race, and you've already mentioned it uh, about the sort of down the middle centrist approach. Would, would you mind if we just stick with, a, with, with the Republicans sure. just for a second? Because sure. because that we we get into the runoff. And then we get to the Clay Tippins episode. That's right. The the tape, and then right. let's talk about the endorsement too. Right. Exactly. Okay. All right. So, so we have a uh, the, a day or two after the primary, we have our two candidates uh, headed for a July runoff: Brian Kemp and Casey Cagle. Uh, Clay Tippins, who's defeated now out of the race, he comes into uh, uh, Cagle's office. Off. Uh, 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 he's looking. Uh, Kegel is looking for an endorsement. Of course, that's what you do immediately after a primary. You 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 try to build up, mm -hmm. you, uh, you get the you get the organizations and supporters of the guys who are no longer in the race. Okay, he and Kegel, uh, Tippins and Kegel sit down. Before Kegel, uh, Kip Tippins walked into the office, he had he had his iPhone out. He punched record, and walked into Kegel's office. And. Uh, Let's say that Kegel was a little more verbose than he ought to have been, and he talked about uh, about uh, a a bill that he had passed in order to shut off uh, an education bill that he thought would uh, shut off funding to Hunter Hill, the other, another Republican in the race, mm -hmm. uh, and that's important because that bill was opposed by. Tippins's uncle, Lindsay Tippins. All right, Lindsay Tippins is my was my is, is as of this recording is my state senator. He lives you know maybe three quarters of a mile from my house. Okay. All right. So not long after that, uh, uh, there was an, there was another, uh, and they released the 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 the, uh, 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 the little snippets of, of the interview. There are still others. There's sort of a death by a thousand cuts. Right, and there's still there's still more out there. I'm sure that has and. Uh, but a few days after that, uh, I, was in, uh, I was out in uh, uh, Lindsay Tippin's house with uh, Greg Bluestein, uh, another reporter with the AJC, and we're talking to Lindsay about why this has all happened. And at the root of this, and this, is get, I know this gets into some detail that you know, we need to put on the record, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's probably more, than you, more detail than you, than you want. Uh, but this education, there was an education bill that would have sent more money to charter schools, uh, public schools. 
Lindsay didn't like it. He's a big, he's conservative, but he was a very big public education man. Right. And couldn't, and, 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 and thought this was a very bad thing. He offered to resign his chairmanship on the St Senate Education Committee to let, uh, and, and let Casey have his bill. Uh, uh, Casey, Casey said, no, I, I want you to pass it with, with everything that you think should be in it. That happened. Uh, the, the, bill, uh, the, the, the bill went to the, to, to the floor of the Senate. It was changed to Cagle's orders. Uh, Lindsey Tippins felt used and betrayed. He resigned his chairmanship. Uh, and, uh, and that became the fodder of conversation between uh, Clay Tippins and Casey Cagle. And that's, that's the background of that. So, so there were, two, uh, you know, Cagle felt betrayed by, what, uh, by the secret recording that Clay Tippins did. Uh, uh, Clay Tippins, understood that his uncle felt betrayed by what Casey, uh, Casey Cagle had forced him to do earlier uh, as, uh, in, that, in, that, uh, in the, the legislation right. just a few weeks earlier. So that, that became the operating dynamic of this primary runoff in, in many ways. All right? Mm -hmm. Then you had, of course, and, and you, you had uh, Brian Kemp pushing the Trump button ever more and ever more. We get to, when was the primary, July 24th or 20th? I think Let, 24th. Okay, mid-July. All right, we have a mid-July primary runoff. Casey is bogged down in the polls. He is, is still, again, he has not moved from, from what he was showing in January, all right? Uh, daily tracking polls are, 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 showing he, uh, are showing him and Kemp very, very close to each other, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, a week before the vote, Cagle, who is considered the business-friendly candidate, he has, the, he, has, he has the support of a lot of the, chamber, the Georgia chamber. Uh, uh, he finally persuades Governor Nathan Deal to endorse him. All right? A very popular incumbent. Uh, he, uh, at, toward the end of his term, Deal was very popular. It was a, it was a smart thing to do, except that it did, it, it did telegraph that... Uh, that he was in trouble. You don't do something like that unless you know, uh, un unless things aren't aren't going your way. But what that also did was it, it activated the Purdue Trump Alliance. And you had a cabinet meeting in the White House. I think on a on a Wednesday. Uh, you'd you'd have to check the dates for me. Uh, Sonny Purdue was there. Uh, so was uh, Nick Ayers, who was the, 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 a former Sonny Purdue aide mm -hmm. and chief of staff for, for Vice President Mike Pence. And of course, Donald Trump was there, all right? Maybe an hour, hour and a half, two hours later, there's a tweet. It's an endorsement from Donald Trump to, uh, of, of Brian Kemp, to have never met before. Uh, it was, uh, and, and we later found out it was done on the, on the, on the, uh, uh, the say-so of Sonny Purdue. All right, uh, and the bottom drops out of the Kegel campaign, and I think what what's the final? What was the final? <coughs> it was 157 counties for mm -hmm. for Brian Kemp. If the, the margin, the margin actually is 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 Casey did Casey Kegel did worse against Brian Kemp in that runoff than Stacey Evans mm -hmm. did against Stacey Abrams in the Democratic primary. Uh, so it, it just it, it, people stampeded it away from Kegel and toward Kemp. Republican mm. voters did. Do you think the the Trump endorsement was uh, definitive, or was it just sort of the the, the coup de gras, the the icing in the cake? I think it was definitive mm. because you, uh, we we showed. Uh, let me see. Was it yeah, the Kegel, Kegel campaign uh, showed me the tracking polls, and, and we published them. They're 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 out. Uh, uh, they're, right, they're out there somewhere, uh, and and it showed it it showed Kemp and Kegel just kind of passing back and forth day to day to day to day. The tweet comes and Kemp goes woof like that. It was it was it was that definitive. I do remember one of the one of the last polls that that, that was conducted had, had Kemp ahead by something like sixteen points or something, and it, mm -hmm. that and was sort of that was sort might, of eye popping. Picked, it, it might have picked up some of, uh, a part of that. Uh, part of the uh, the aftermath of of the Trump tweet, right? So, as you you mentioned on on the Democratic side, you know Stacey Abrams' huge margin of victory. Um, 
what becomes of the sort of Roy Barnes, Buddy Darden axis in democratic politics? It ages out. And I, 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 think that's, I think that's one of the most important things that happened in 2018, is that you had, you had Stacey Evans, uh, a well-known uh, state house member from Smyrna, mm -hmm. uh, very close to Roy Barnes' ter home territory of Mableton. Uh, uh, kind of a, a Barnes was, was one of her mentors, uh, so was Buddy Darden, another, uh, I mean, who, who, another Cobb County Democrat. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and their, you know, the, the, their traditional strategy has been, you know, find your most conservative de Democrat that can make, make, make his or her way through a primary. And, and then, you, then you just make that little adjustment toward the center and you pick off the independents who may put you uh, in the winner's seat. The problem is that hadn't worked since, uh, well, I mean, you did have, uh, I think you had Thurbert Baker and Michael Thurman may have won one more race after 2002. Yes, yes. But you never they won 06. In, in, they did. in 06, in 06. You, you, uh, you never, you never, uh, you never again, uh, from, from, from 1998, you know, you haven't had a, a, you haven't had a new face, new Democratic face, win a statewide race in Georgia. Uh, and so what you had was, and, 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 and this gets, it's, it's actually quite interesting, and, and, and a little bit, you saw a little bit of it uh, 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 in, the, in the 2014 race uh, between J with Jason Carter and uh, Nathan Deal, mm -hmm. is Nathan Deal's reelect year, and then in the Senate race between David Perdue and Michelle Nunn, okay? There was always, there, there, there was this growing tension between uh, those who, uh, Democrats uh, who traditionally depended on, uh, the, the other arm of that, by the way, the, the, the strategy, the cent centrist strategy, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, uh, it was, it was, it was uh, a very big emphasis on TV ads. Right, hoard your money, flood the, the TV, airways. Flood the, flood the airways and get it that way, all right? That was f going into, th th that, was, that was coming into more and more disfavor. Uh, and Atlanta Mayor Kasim Reed raised it quite a few times. You saw some of your uh, uh, other your, your uh, other strategists like uh, uh, Theron Johnson uh, saying that no, this is the wrong strategy. That you need to really concentrate. If, if African Americans are the base of your party, you go to them first. You don't go to them last. Mm. You know, you don't you don't go after after your 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 white independents throughout the campaign, and then in the last two weeks go after your African-American base. No, you go after your African-American base first, you get those people on board, and you, and you work on the intensity. There's a, there's a parallel here between what, 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 what Abrams did and what the Purdue, Purdue Trump machine and Kemp did. That's, I was just getting get ready to ask about comparing and contrasting there's, those there's, because it's two si all, it seems to be yes, two sides of the yeah, same this is, this is all This is all about, about intensity. I, I think uh, you'd have to look up how many of your registered voters are, actually turn out uh, I think what turnout was what forty percent in the in the November election. Oh no, uh, of registered, it was somewhere closer to sixty. Sixty, 60 okay. To 65. Okay, but still, that means that means there are forty percent of, of all registered voters are out there not showing up. Correct. So the strategy is to get those people. Mm -hmm. That means you don't have to change your policies. You just have to get more people who believe in them. Uh, Kemp was doing it on that side, following Sonny Perdue and Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Abrams was bring, a, a, Abrams brought that that method to uh, the Democratic side. Uh, you had uh, but back to Stacey Evans, she was the white candidate. Uh, Abrams made it very clear that she was uh, she was running an African American centrist uh, centered uh, campaign very quickly uh, in the August in August of 2017. I can't remember the name of the group. Uh, it was a liberal group, uh, something like Move On, but it wasn't. It wasn't Move On dot org. It was at uh, what was it? Netroots. Netroots. Net thank Roots. you. That's that's what it was. It was the Net Netroots con uh, convention in the Hyatt Regency in downtown Atlanta. Uh, it was it was your your hardcore liberal uh, uh, Democrats. 
Stacy Evans, uh, Stacy Abrams got up first to talk. She was treated as a just as a as a as a champion, cheered lustily. Stacy Evans got up, uh, a, a very small white woman, uh, and she got booed off the stage. Uh, and uh, I think the, one of the the crowd was trust black women. Mm -hmm. I mean that was that was that was the. Uh, that was that was the chant that 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 put her put her off the stage. So so that dynamic was out there, and it was very early, uh, and everybody understood what was what was happening there. What do you think the what made the difference between twenty eighteen with Stacey Abrams triumphing something like seventy five percent of the vote in the Democratic primary to to those earlier elections with with Roy Barnes defeating Thurbert Baker in two thousand ten. Uh, and there wasn't even a, a contested primary in 2014. What gives? Uh, n number one, uh, Donald Trump. Okay, I mean that's, that's you, the you, elephant you, in the room. The elephant in the room. Okay, all right. But you had you you'd had uh, you'd had 17 or 15 years of failure, using the same thing to, over and over again, and and, and getting the same result. Uh, uh, I was talking uh, uh, under Gillespie, a uh, political <laughs> scientist over at uh, over at Emory, uh, uh, and this was back in uh, this was back in in the fall of, of twenty seventeen when okay. the race was just starting, and it was you know and it was it was we, you know among ourselves we you know this we knew this was Stacey Abrams's uh, race to lose just given the, the makeup of the party, and what what she t she told me something very interesting that I think that really helped me understand what was going on. She said that if if Jason Carter in the 2014 race for governor, I think he drew 23% of the white vote. Right. All right. If Stacey Abrams can go to an African American base first, intensify that base and still do better than Jason Carter among white voters, then that then then she has it doesn't matter it didn't matter if she won or lost, she had proven something. Mhm. Mm and that, and that's pretty much what happened. I I I I don't know know that we I have a clear view of of, of how what the white vote that you got. I think it's up to twenty seven percent. I I know it's around twenty five percent. But um, she did better than Car than Carter. Yes, this, she did better, better than, than Carter the and of Hillary the Clinton. President. Correct. So, so there was there was that, uh, and you could and and you could see some of the. Uh, uh, you could see the tension, and there was a first meeting between Stacey Evans and Stacey Abrams in October of 2017. Mm -hmm. I believe Melita Easter's win list was the was the sponsor for it. Yes, Kathy Cox, the Secretary of State, was the uh, yeah that was that was their their first sort of sit down right the, the, the moderator kind of thing the moderator. It was okay. at the Carter Center. I believe. It was. It, it, I think you're right. Yes, it was at the Carter Center, and. A couple of interesting things happened out of that one. Uh, a Abrams opened with a uh, with a, a story about her graduation from a uh, DeKalb County High School as valedictorian. And at that time, I think this was '92, all of the valedictorians uh, in the state of Georgia were invited to the governor's mansion, to Zell Miller's governor's mansion. All right. Uh, Stacy's family had moved from Mississippi. Her parents were preachers. Uh, I think they were still in seminary, both of them at the at the time. And you know, money was tight. I don't think they had a car. The car had broken down. I think Stacy said that Abrams said that the the car had gotten them to Atlanta and died, basically. So they came via bus. All right. Uh, she uh, she told the story of how her parents and and she and her parents walked up to the the guard station in, on. Uh, that, that protected uh, the governor's mansion on West Pace's fer mm -hmm. ferry, and the guard would not let them in. Okay, and she got very demonstrative there. This was, you know, and uh, I, I, I later, later wrote that she got she, you know, she, she. There was a flash of anger that she showed there. All right, number one, it made Zell Miller's people very mad. Uh, Zell Miller was still alive at that point. Right, uh, he would die in the next spring, but uh, but people like who had been his uh, like Keith Mason, who had been his chief of staff, uh, had, had, you know, she said this never happened. 
you know. And, and Abrams very specifically left out an end of that story. Okay, so I called her people back and said, okay, what happened? Did you get in? Did you get turned away? Because she never said so. And she said, no, they eventually got in. Uh, and so her, her story uh, changed on that a little bit. Uh, uh, I, I did get some pushback from uh, the Abrams campaign, uh, who uh, uh, when you're when you're when these things happen, new strategies require new language and have their own demand, demands for for, 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 for for language. All right. Uh, uh, the angry black man, of course, is one, and the angry black woman is another, and they objected to the use of my the word uh, angry. So, is 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 that something that has always been the nature uh, of Stacey Evans, or is that something that it was just the wrong race at the wrong time for Stacey Evans? It was probably a leap leap too far. Uh, you know, a, a congressional race, a state senate race, a countywide race, commission chair, or something, commission something chair, which, which he's being talked about now for uh, that. That would have that would have. Uh, she needed. She needed. Uh, uh, she's a very soft spoken woman, right? Very bright. Uh, I would say brilliant in many ways, uh, but she's very soft spoken, and in a in a in a in a very polarized political climate. That doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So at, in, in the general election, you know, let's skip ahead to, to you know, the votes are there. What about election night surprised you, if anything, in the governor's race? In things? the governor's race, no, no, you have to back that up a few days. Okay. okay. The big surprise, of course, came that weekend before. Mm. Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay, all right. So throughout the campaign, you've had uh, Stacey Abrams, uh, bringing up concerns about uh, uh, how how the election is being conducted by the candidate who's in charge, Secretary which, of State Brian Kemp. Secretary of State Brian Kemp, he is in charge of the election that will see him governor. All right, and <clears throat> you have a uh, Thursday or Friday before that, you have a fellow whose name I cannot recall right now, and we don't know much about him. But he, but he contacted via email the state Democratic Party. They had a voter security project going. And he said he had identified some uh, vulnerabilities in the state's voter database through one of its uh, consumer websites. Right. Oh, uh, the My Voter page or something, something like yes, that. Yes, yes. The My, yeah. All right. MVP. Now, and of course, hacking is, is, is a big topic at the time. Uh, and... And so the 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 woman that he what is her name? Um, I wish I could remember. Was her it name. A Jennifer? No. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Uh, 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 he contacts a staffer. All right, and says this is the this is the problem. Okay. All right. She passes it to her boss in the state Democratic Party. The boss passes it to a few uh, a few other people of. No, they're treating they're treating this very seriously. Right. They're, they're not. They're, this they had, is, their their voter protection was a very high profile. Right. Right. Know. And this is and they 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 sent it to uh, a fellow named uh, I think his name is Wan Kuli, uh on the uh, on the, uh, who's who's on the, a a a a, uh, a a a a ballot machine uh, committee that mm -hmm. Brian Kemp formed. The the Safe Commission. The Safe Commission. Thank you. And uh, and they sent it to a couple of other their technical experts. Their technical experts contacted the FBI. Uh, eventually, uh, some of the, the the law enforcement people contacted Brian Kemp and let him know what was going on. And then a a tech a a tech journalist uh, calls the Secretary of State's office and say, "Look, this is happening. I'm going to be publishing a story on Sunday morning." Okay. I need a comment from you. That's all it was. All right. Uh, and so the next morning we wake up, and the Kemp, uh, the Kemp's, and this is important. 
is the Secretary of State's office, N not his campaign, not his campaign, announced, announces that it has opened an investigation into the Democratic Party of Georgia and its attempt to hack into the state's voter database. All right? And all sorts of flares started going off. All right? This was, and, and basically what I wrote, wrote was, you know, this is, this is all online. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. moving too fast for print. You know, basically Secretary of State Brian Kemp had endorsed uh, Republican gubernatorial candidate Brian Kemp in the race for governor. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a very questionable use of the state office to, to, uh, for, for, for electioneering purposes. Now, I understand that, that, that Kemp was probably at the time thought he was being, this was a defensive move on his part. I think he suspected that, the, that, the, that he was going to in, in, uh, be hit with a Democrat, another Democratic attempt to say that, that he wasn't a good custodian of, of, uh, of, uh, of this, uh, voter personal data. Mm -hmm. All right? So, but he put that out there. No details, no nothing. All right. Uh, I do. I, I, you know, I, I put a, I put a, a post out there that's, that's extremely, that just says, look, you know, Brian, Brian Kemp has done this. He needs us to give, give more details. This is seventy-two hours before an election. He, we need details, and we need them fast, and we need them public. All right. So I start. I'm swapping messages with, uh, with his. Uh, his, his spokeswoman in the Secretary of State's office, Candace Boyd, I think. I, I'm not sure that I've got that name right, okay? Okay. You know, she's, call, she's calling me. She says she has spoken off the record with a couple of my colleagues, you know, and, that, and, and, and why didn't I get in touch with her before I put that post up? Uh, you know, and, and I'm saying, you know, this, is, you know, this, isn't, this, this isn't off record stuff. You know, we're not doing anything off record here. This is this is all this is all very, you know, this this is too crucial for me to to, to, to let anybody go off record on this. And eventually, she does put out a an on the record text. This comes via text, and she raises. Oh, Rachel, Rachel is Rachel, Rachel somebody rather, was the uh, was the Democratic staffer that was first contacted. And she's and and the Kemp's spokeswoman, his formal state-paid spokeswoman, starts. You know, it lays out these questions: Who is Rachel, if that's her real name? You know, uh, uh, it's uh, it, it's uh, it, it was very ill-considered. It, 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 uh, and 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 I and, and the one thing one thing that was happening at this time was. Uh, <coughs> Uh, 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 Kemp's spokesman was a, a uh, not just a spokesperson, but also an attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, her, uh, she had the official position of counselor, counsel to, to the Secretary of State's office. That means that means in in our research after trying to piece together what happened that weekend, you know, attorney-client privilege is, is is being cited. So that's that's interesting. Okay. So anyway. So we get to uh, the, the whole. This whole race is blowing up, and this is this. This becomes a national thing. Uh, I mean, it's. I mean, this is a. This 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 race was a big focus of national oh, sure. media. All right. So I am in conversation with um, uh, David Worley, who is a Democrat, the Democrat on the state elections board. Right. Uh, calling him, saying, you know, what the hell's going on? Uh, have you been informed of any of this stuff? Because that would be a proper thing to do, and no, he had not. He had not heard anything. Okay, uh, and he started talking to me about what what actually had happened with with all these emails. Mm -hmm. uh, I get on the phone with Dubose Porter, uh, who's the chairman of the party at that time, and and ask him the same questions. And there are times when you when you have to persuade a, 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 a source that his self-interest is, 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 is at stake and, uh, you know, you offer advice to them. And I, I told DeBose, if you want to kill this, make, those, make all that email as public 
as quickly as you can. And he did that. Uh, uh, it was annotated, uh, annotated. Right. It was, it was, you know, it was, uh, it was, uh, uh, it was, you had an email and, and then you had a, a note from the, the party spokesperson about what that meant and meant. Explaining and who these different people exactly, were right. for the, and, the and, and it showed exactly how this thing came about. And so I put the emails up, uh, all of them. Uh, and I think I, we did that uh, by Monday, um, by Monday, late Monday mo morning or Monday afternoon. And that pretty much killed the story right there. You didn't hear much more of it in the next 24, 48 hours. What have we heard, uh, to jump ahead, what have we heard of this allegation investigation uh, since Well, we, we had a, we, the AJC had a story out in, in uh, late December. Uh, none, of the, none of the alleged uh, uh, participants, uh, uh, no official with the, the, uh, the Democratic Party had been interviewed. Uh, you know, the Secretary of State's office said the FBI was being was involved, the GBI was involved. We've got no evidence of that. Uh, and one of the, of course, one of the tricks of the, the limitations of the state's open records law is that as long as an investigation is open, you can withhold all the documents there too. All right? This, this investigation is going to be open a long time. <laughs> so, yeah, that comes at the end of... That, that, that allegation, mm -hmm. that revelation comes at the very end of, of early voting, which right. historic number of, of Georgians it comes voted after early, early voting. Correct. Early voting at, started, at end, ended the, on Friday. And this comes on, on the Sunday morning. Um, why and how do Georgia Democrats run up an advantage on early voting? They used to not. This was different. How so? Uh, absentee balloting. Traditionally, has been the, the has been the, uh, the, the 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 tool that older Republicans use. And this is mail-in absentee. Mail mail-in absentee ballots. This is not early voting where you go to a polling station. Right, the early in person. Right. And I want to say, I I, I have to go back and use it. after the election. I was told that the Democratic Party sent out a million absentee ballots just to Georgia voters, period, okay? Do you know how they targeted uh, No, I voters? don't know how they targeted. No, I don't, I don't. And so you, 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 you had 159 election officials in Georgia suddenly seeing this storm of absentee ballots. And of course, you know, word does get to, to Brian Kemp, who is the Secretary of State. And in charge of that, uh, and uh, and he 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 does start ringing some alarms about uh, uh, to his fellow Republicans, saying we've got to match this. You know, uh, but it also what it did was it, it also created a situation where the infrastructure the the election infrastructure wasn't capable of handling the the what what the Democrats were generating. Mm -hmm. If you, if you will. And this is at a county level. This is at a county level, okay? All right. Uh, and what we found out afterwards was that basically you had 159 different standards of, of you know, it, we, had a, we had a provision in there set that says the, the signature on the absentee ballot that's mailed in has to match the signature on the voting registration. You know, who matches that? You know, how closely? Who decides? Mm -hmm. You know, you had different situations from that. You had a, 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 you had to write on the on the envelope that you mailed in, uh, and then there was a, a, a space to put a date. Okay. Now most people would think that's the day's date that you mailed it. No, they were looking for the date, the, your birth date. On the outside. On of the, the outside of the envelope. Hmm. Now, now, now we, we were told that's be, that that is to speed up. Uh, that was to speed up processing. But it's also an invitation to failure, and ballots were rejected time and time again for that for 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 that very thing. Well, we found out that that these voter, voters once a, an absentee ballot was rejected, they weren't contacted mm. to say, 
uh, there's a problem with your ballot, why don't you come here and fix it? Is there a provision for that, or, or is that just something yeah, that, I th that I a think local registrar I think, I, I think there's. I think there is some it's some 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 legal legal language that says you have you, you should be contacted, but I don't think it's very strong. Okay. I, I, uh, okay. So basically, what it showed was that you had it was it was you know the 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 dec we're in a, we're in a period of of of, of hacking right now mm -hmm. of, of election hacking the the Russian thing is big right now okay all right and we've always been told that actually decentralization of of America's voting system is is its greatest strength but here we saw that decentralization was actually it was was it can be a weakness too. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, especially, you know, when you get down to the local levels, people know people. They know who's black. They know who's not. Mm -hmm. They know who's white. They know who votes Republican. They know who votes votes Democrat. All right, and the opportunity there to 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 uh, point shave, if you will, is 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 there, and that's that's what Democrats found disturbing. So, uh, you know, what what Democrats allege would be a more nuanced version of the 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 good old days in Georgia politics where you just waited until counties uh, reported and yeah, you found or, or, or you, you know, or, or, or you, or you, you, a voter had to pass a test, you know, mm -hmm. how many, how many jelly beans are in this, uh, this jar? Right. So that you, was, a, that was an example that Cesar Mitchell, the former Atlanta city council president raised to me. That's, that's, that's what he compared it to. Well, e even on the, the day of, I remember very early on election day, the news came out of, well, there's always problems in Fulton County for, mm -hmm. for, for whatever reason. Um, we can talk about the slow counting later, but uh, I think it came out of Gwinnett County where they, they too few extension cords, and, 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 and I think Fulton County was unused voting machines in right. a warehouse. What you had Gwinnett was, was okay, power. so what you had was one of the problems, and this wasn't Brian Kemp's fault, No, but you had a, a lawsuit that was proceeding uh, through the federal system challenging the accuracy of Georgia's voting machines, which were very outdated, operating on software that nobody built Windows anymore. 2000. Right, right, okay. So the judge ordered, uh, and, and, and apparently it was fairly vague, he ordered these machines to be sequestered so, they could, so that people could actually exam examine them. I don't think the judge meant to, uh, to order the sequestration of all of them. But that's but 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 a lot of counties did did uh, they sequestered more than they ought to have, mm -hmm. and so there was this artificial shortage of machines in certain places. You also had one of the great anomalies, and and uh, and we're talking we're talking four months after the election here we, uh, well three months okay after the election here, and you had. You, you, uh, ballot drop off is 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 really very common, uh, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. it follows a very st statistically yes. order, ordered yeah. pattern. Okay, uh, and and as you move from the top of the ticket to the bottom, you know you, voters drop off. Okay, on November six, we had a a terrific, we, we had just a stunning anomaly. All right, it, we still haven't sorted out. Uh, Republicans aren't very curious about it. Uh, uh, and but you had the governor's race here, and then you had a hundred thousand vote drop off in the lieutenant governor's race. Right. And then you had a reactivation of those votes in the, the race below for secretary of state, and it followed that gen gentle decline all the way down. But you had a canyon right here with uh, you had a loss lost. Hundred thousand votes uh, in the uh, in the lieutenant governor's race, which was won by Republican Jeff Duncan. He was running against uh, Democrat Sarah Riggs Amico, businesswoman from Cobb County, mm -hmm. had never run for office before. But possible it, explanations. Uh, well, I, I, I've had conversations with her, quite frankly, and and, and 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 what she points out is that that canyon doesn't appear statistically on early votes. Or on absentee ballot. Uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't appear on absentee ballot. So it only appears on votes cast by Georgia's outdated machines. Do we know where the vote 
Well, do we know where the undervotes came from geographically? Right now, she's still she's still investigating that be, because you have uh, a, a lawsuit was just dismissed on this. Yeah, today, I just read that uh, yeah. today. Uh, Adele Grubbs uh, was the judge up in Cobb County. She dismissed that, uh, and that dismissal of that probably would w should free up some information. You know, make make more the open records uh, request for for the data the voting machine data a little bit easier to get hold of. Well, it, it would seem, as you mentioned, you know, there's no drop-off on early voting in person, no drop-off early vote absentee, that the, the argument that, well, maybe 100,000 people thought Abrams and Amico were running as a ticket and you didn't have to vote for... for that's, that's, you know... It, it would it's, suggest it's, that it's that's possibly. possible. It's also possible that uh, Amico's name was left off. Hmm. Or the lieutenant governor's race was left off. Just, oh, not visible on that touch screen. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, we don't know. Something for the AJC to spend some more time <laughs> right. examining. Right. So on election night in 20, 2018, um, Abrams comes very close to, to, to forcing a runoff. Her strength came from urban centers and the inner suburbs right. of Georgia. Mm -hmm. Um, Cobb County and Gwinnett County, which had flipped in 2016 with Hillary Clinton. Uh, by plurality. By, correct. She did not, Hillary Clinton did not win a majority because of the, the, the um, Gary Johnson vote. Right. Mm -hmm. um, didn't just flip. They, they it went solid blue. What accounts for that? Uh, number one, changing de demographics, the population. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm a resident of Cobb County, so I've seen it. It was it was very interesting. I I, 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 I voted on the last day of early voting. Okay. In in Cobb County, in West Cobb, and and if you know anything about Cobb County, that portion is probably the most conservative area. That was my, my master's thesis was on post World War II Cobb County politics. Right. Yeah. It's a very conservative. That's, that's old it's, it's yeah. It's, it's it's old Talmadge territory, and. Uh, it took me about 90 minutes to vote. The lines were long, and they were not Donald Trump voters. Mm. They were they were they were people of color. Uh, they were people who have had just moved into the county, county, or were just let's say maybe they had been there for a while and become they they had become politically active only recently. Right. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, women voters. You know, it wasn't uh, a, it it wasn't a, a, a friendly Republican crowd. It was it was it was it was the turning of the tide again. Mm -hmm. How much of how much credit or blame, I suppose, does Donald Trump oh, deserve good, good. I for, think, for I, that? I, I think I think he, he he deserves quite a bit of credit. Uh, I think I think especially in in, Co in East Cobb and North Fulton and. Uh, Northern DeKalb and, mm -hmm. and Southern Gwinnett, I think John Ossoff, the John Ossoff Karen Handel campaign mm -hmm. of the year earlier uh, right. for the sixth district race, I think that that created a a, a kind of a, 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 a prototype of organization and, and, and drew a whole lot of women into the contest mm -hmm. who were already ticked off at Donald Trump. Uh, and then uh, and, and it just blossomed from there. Do you think that there are any counties or areas of the state that, that Democrats, that's their next step of, of expanding their appeal into, into new areas beyond the sort of inner suburbs since the Republicans, their stronghold now is the, the, the what would have been the, the Northern Arc. Well, um, Exerbia, right now. But what's interesting is that Half of right now, half of all Georgians live in ten counties. Right, the Metro Atlanta core. Uh, well, not just Metro Atlanta, but or are Chatham, you talking about okay. Chatham yeah, but, and 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 ri the Richmond, Columbia County areas, okay. Columbus. You know, in there are there are, in the ten highest population counties, Democrats now control eight of them, and the others being Cherokee, Cherokee, and Forsyth, and Forsyth. All right, and. Uh, if you if you if you take a look at what happened in North Fulton, mm -hmm. where you had you, you had uh, Brad Raffensperger's house seat, he, you remember he Johns went, Creek. Johns Creek. He went to he went uh, to, he ran in the Secretary of State's off, uh, race. His seat was open. That seat went Democrat to a to a, to a, to a, to a, to, a, to, a, to a woman who was not born here. Mm. Uh, 
uh, Tom Price's wife. Betty Price. Betty Price, uh, hardcore Republican, she lost her seat. Uh, early in the evening, Jan Jones, the Speaker Pro Tem of the House, the State House, uh, she was behind. She, she turned it around, but she is now, she's uh, going into 2020, uh, she's going to be vulnerable. She's up in Milton? Right. Right, mm -hmm. okay. And if that's the pattern that you're following, then, then of course, the next, the next edge of that is, is Forsyth County, is the southern portion of Forsyth County. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could, yeah, you, I mean, it, it, you could, as, as, the, as the state's population grow, uh, grows, yeah, that, that's what's going to happen. What, what happened to the, you know, there was a, the much vaunted uh, on the Democratic side that, that Stacey Abrams Democrats would go into rural areas that, that um, they felt that Democrats weren't talking to, to voters in, in those rural, predominantly black belt counties. What happened to the, the, the rural outreach uh, from the Democratic I Party? I think it was a lot harder than people thought. I, and 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 I think I, I mean Abrams began her campaign in Albany mm -hmm. in Dar Darty County, uh, and if, if if there if there was a place where the, where Abrams' strategy didn't pan out, I think it was it was her outreach to rural Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, it just didn't, you know. It is uh, there is a there is a a parallel to. That, that reaches back to the Talmadge years, that 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 you know that the higher population of African Americans, the better Gene Talmadge did in a right. county, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of that was voter suppression, obviously. Absolutely, absolutely. But the intensity jumps up quite a bit mm -hmm. because that those are be, because the, the, the that's where that's where the the racial antagonism is 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 strongest. V. O. Key wrote. All about that, the, the, exactly. the intensity of conservative whites in majority black counties, right? Plant, right. Know, plantation belt, right? And 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 that's what they they ran into, and that's you know that's that's the thing that we have to watch out for in twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty two, is is that as Republicans become more of a minority in the state, well, the, the what, what we're learning is that minority minorities. Don't just reach out and grab other people to become a majority. Their their first instinct is to coalesce, and to call for greater unity, and to to expel uh, uh, the, the people who don't fo follow the, the 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 proper line. We've seen this in uh, North Carolina, yes. for example. Mm -hmm. After two thousand eight, talk was that this was a, a purple state, going to go to go blue. And and yes, Roy Cooper is governor of North Carolina, mm -hmm. but. Legislative Republicans are, are they right, circled right. the wagons and right, right, and and you've got the situation right now as as as, as you and I speak, uh, the the uh, Democrats picked up thirteen seats in in the House in the House and Senate combined in the State House and Senate combined right eleven in the State House okay, uh, most of those were in Metro Atlanta mm -hmm. all right, and that means you have a a Republicans have a fifteen seat majority in in the House now. All right. Of those, uh, I think seven of those seven of, of seven seven of uh, you had you had seven Republican House House Republican members who won by fifty two percent or less of the vote. Mm -hmm. Nine percent, uh, nine of them lost a uh, won by only fifty three percent. Okay, and this isn't a midterm. This isn't a midterm. And you've got you've got a presidential contest coming up uh, that will that, that will give Democrats a terrific tailwind. So you've got right now you've got more than half of the House Republican margin of of of, of control at risk coming up in 2020. Mm -hmm. It's not so big. It's not so big in the state Senate. Uh, right. Uh, you, you you only have maybe I think two seats that fall in that 53 percent range. Mm -hmm. uh, Chuck Estration and Gwinnett. John Albers in Roswell. Okay. Both both Republicans, of course. Um, Barden Hooks down in uh, Americus, was that a House race or Senate race? That was a House race, okay. I think. Because that was one that was very close. That was very close. Uh, he didn't pull it off. Mm -hmm. The the uh, uh, the re uh, Mike Chokas returns mm -hmm. uh, as a Republican. And He's Barden very Hooks close is, is George 
Hooks's son? Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just, and then you've got Sharon Cooper, I think, in, in, in yeah, Cobb she's County. One of, she's one of those House Republicans close. who are very vulnerable. Who's very vulnerable. And of course, the two Athens area Democrats who had won the previous November in the special election, Republicans both gave were up able, their, yeah. their seats as well. Mm -hmm. So looking at the, the congressional races, the 6th and 7th, um, talk about the dynamics of that campaign that, that Lucy McBath was able to succeed, um, whereas Rob Woodall, the Republican incumbent, held on, held off uh, Carolyn Bordeaux um, in the 7th. Conventional wisdom going in would have thought that, that Rob Woodall was maybe more vulnerable than Karen Handel. What happened in those two races? Well, you had two different approaches by the Republican okay. incumbents, okay? Uh, Karen Handel, who had just won the seat of, of I think she'll, she'll, she'll have spent an, uh, 18 months as uh, she spent. I think she was elected in June was, June, the, was June, the runoff. Of the, June of the year before, okay? So she hadn't been in office very long. Uh, but she is a bulldog of a candidate, you know, and and she came she went out uh, she went, came out swinging, uh, lots of lots of attack ads. Uh, had she had lots of help coming of people coming up uh, of, of of dark money and and uh, and super PACs coming out for her. Rob Woodall kind of sat back and didn't engage. Uh, I. Uh, as has been his approach as his approach since yes. 2010 uh, he's been famous for he's been famous for a uh, for 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 his quiet work with constituents he's got a he had, he had a very very strong he has a very strong constituent service network right uh, which is very important in, in congress as we know okay uh, it's interesting that they that that Woodall won by a hair and Handel lost by a hair it, it was almost as if it didn't matter what approach you took, whether it was a hardcore fight or a or a, a duck your head and 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 uh, hope this thing passes over. It didn't. It didn't matter. It'll uh, make make for a wonderful test case on do, you know the old question: Do campaigns matter? Exactly. Anymore? Exactly. I think uh, you know. I think uh, uh, I, I, it's remarkable. Yes, you have Newt Gingrich's sixth district. Uh, is now represented by an African American Republic, or Democratic woman, you know, whose son uh, was murdered mm -hmm. seven years earlier, or five years earlier. I'm, I'm bad with the dates there. Okay, uh, and and just given the worry over over firearms in uh, in, in suburbia, that's that helps explain that. Uh, you also had a a situation where uh, where uh, the the Georgia four hundred corridor. You had <coughs> you had Mercedes Benz mm -hmm. move in there. Uh, for a long time, Porsche had had its court headquarters there, and a lot of its people still 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 work there. So you had you had uh, Donald Trump uh, talking tariffs. Oh on, right, on yeah. automotive import tariffs. Okay, mm -hmm. and so you had Karen Handel, who is you know who, who kind of vacillated when it came to how she was going to. How she, her, uh, when it came to her relationship with with Trump, she had to she had to part ways with him on that one, uh, and I don't know that it helped. You know, it it uh, uh, you also remember that uh, Karen Handel was very had a, had, had a big strong endorsement from the NRA, and that's another thing we saw in 2018. You saw that in a general election in Georgia, the NRA endorsement did not help you, and in many cases it hurt you. Mm -hmm. That's something. That was something entirely new that we we, we had not experienced. Right in tw 2014, Jason Carter did he have an A rating for the yes, NRA? Yeah, yep. Yes, yes, and he you know he voted for uh, the guns on uh, was it the guns on campus bill. Uh, he, uh, he voted to expand uh, 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 fire uh, where firearms can be carried. I think uh, when he was in the state senate. I don't think he was in the senate with the the the, gu the, campus, the campus gun carry. bill. Okay. That, that would have been 2015, 2016. Yeah, okay. All right. But he did. He, he did vote for for gun legislation. Sure. And you know, if if he's running for 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 governor again in the future, that's gonna that's 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 not the advantage that it was. Especially not in a primary. No, no. Uh, so that's that. That was interesting. Uh, 
I think, you know, it was, it was, I was talking to Fran Miller, a mm -hmm. state senator, Republican out of Dunwoody, uh, and he lost, lost badly, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a two-decade veteran of, of the legislature. To, he to he Sally. was done pretty early in the night. Yeah, so. yeah, very, uh, uh, he lost to Sally, Sally Harrell, a former House member. She was, uh, uh, and, and. He, he, afterwards, I, I you know he, he told me that he could have spent a million dollars more. It just would not have ma made a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and he pointed he started pointing to other Republicans in in the northern uh, nor North Metro arc who lost to you know it, it, you know they, they were they were unsavable, mm -hmm. if you will. They couldn't be rescued. Yeah, there there was a runoff in uh, you know I guess through, throughout the election night we're, we're watching the votes trickle in from Cobb or Fulton County to see what races were actually going to go to a to, to a runoff and then there was obviously the uh, provisional ballots mm -hmm. and a couple couple federal court cases mm -hmm. um, but two races did go to a runoff Secretary of State with with John Barrow off, mm -hmm. also of Athens and Augusta and Savannah. Mm -hmm. um, Against Brad Raffensperger and then Chuck Eaton versus uh, Lindy Miller mm -hmm. for, for a uh, public service commission seat. Republicans won. They continued their, their dominance in, in, in runoffs. Uh, so, question one why do Republicans keep winning runoffs? Uh, they win because uh, uh, they're, they're older voters. And older voters, they go out and vote. They vote. <laughs> they vote. Uh, Regularly, they 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 don't let elections slip by because mm -hmm. that's what they do. Uh, uh, you have to get you have to educate a democratic a, 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 a democratic audience that is younger mm -hmm. and more diverse that in, and it might not have as much electoral experience. Is that the race didn't end on November sixth? There was you know, one on December fourth. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to you have to show up again. But I will tell you something that was really interesting to me. Uh, after that, yeah, yes, Republicans won statewide. It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't a blowout, but it was, you know. And, and with 22% turnout? Right, yeah. right. But I was talking to, um, after this, I was talking to, to Rusty Paul. Mm -hmm. Mayor of Sandy Springs. Mayor of Sandy Springs, uh, former chairman of the Georgia Republican Party That's back right. in the old days. The 90s. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, he's, and, and, he, and, and he pointed me to the fact that even in this runoff, his city of Sandy Springs, home of million-dollar homes, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the most educated electorate probably in all of Georgia, mm -hmm. went solid Democratic. Yeah. Uh, and you know, and his words to me, this is is this is not you know this is this is has has gotten bigger than Trump, that this is now a philosophical shift. That we're seeing in Georgia's population, that it's it's not just a it's not just a one off, it, it, and ironically, you know, centered within the the birthplace of modern republicanism exactly, in yeah, Georgia, yeah. North Fulton County, mm -hmm. Cobb County, not so much Gwinnett, but no, North DeKalb, Dunwoody, right, Brookhaven. So, what are the warning signs? And maybe that maybe that is the warning sign that, that your quote from from Mayor Paul. What are the warning signs for Republicans, even in that, that runoff victory? The warning signs are you have to start paying much, much more attention to the fights you're picking in all of your venues. That you cannot govern Georgia now through the prism of a Republican primary. Mm -hmm. And that's what's been happening. You know, you, you, you had Republicans who said, let me just get through the primary and I'm good. They have to start thinking about the positions that they, that they take in primaries are going to follow them into a general election, and they're going to get, uh, and, 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 and it's going to hurt them. And this is why you've seen some, some the uh, House Speaker David Ralston really ringing some bells uh, during, uh, during the early days of this legislative session saying, you know, we can't go after the, the same issues that, we, we can't go after anti-LGBT issues like we used to. We can't. We have to be uh, be a lot more careful about uh, and cautious about the gun legislation that we start picking up. We have to start going back to to why people voted for us in the first place, which is economic issues, 
uh, that, that's 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 his talking point. That's not mine. But but you know, but but to go to a uh, uh, you can't st you can't keep scaring people away. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't keep scaring white women, and you can't keep scaring young people, because you're losing both of those groups. You said at, at, at an event um, at UGA that you thought the, the days of the racially polarized electorate in Georgia were numbered. What, what did you mean by that? Uh, I think what I, you know, there, there, if, you, if you look at the polling data right now, well, I mean, I mean oh, let's, okay, let's go back decades, all sure. right? Okay. All right. Let's, go back, let's go back to the, the voting rights era. And you saw Georgia Democrats adapt to the new situation where black people could vote, right? Right. You had Jimmy Carter put together a biracial coalition of ruling Democrats, of, 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 uh, of urban African Americans and rural whites. You know, uh, Tom Murphy was the epitome of that. Mm -hmm. And working in, in alliance together, they held it together. They, they, they held control of the state until, until 2002, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, they lost it over what? The flag, you know, a, a, a highly racially polarized issue, mm -hmm. okay? All right, Republicans are facing a point at, it, it, you know, we, we've talked about, in, in this interview, we've talked about, uh, about how, how Republicans are, are going after the intensity factor, right? Okay, you can only push that so far. There are people who don't vote who aren't going to vote. Right. All right. And what you have on the other side, threatening that, is you have, and, and what we saw in the 2018 campaign is we, we we you saw Democrats starting to rebuild that biracial coalition, but but with a but on 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 different ground. You know, it, it, it's it's. Uh, it, it, it's not it's not rural Georgia. It's it's suburban Georgia. Right. And and you know the the, the numbers. You know, if 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 Georgia continues its economic boom as it, as it as it probably will, it's more people are going to move into the state, and they are going to fit the Democratic model and not the Republican model. Which is urban suburban. Urban suburban. Rural. You know, uh, Republican. Republicans are 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 doubling down on on something that has a shelf life, uh, and they know it. They understand that. Uh, but it's hard for for politicians to 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 play a long game. Hmm. And, uh, and they're I they're always up for the next election. And I suppose with the current occupant of the White House makes it even harder, especially for federal. Officers, right? Exactly, and and you, you can't. Uh, it you know if if you are a uh, if you are let me see if I uh, well, if you if you are a David Ralston's not a good example because he's up in North Georgia and that district mm. is, is 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 different. But if you are a suburban Republican right now, if you're a Jan Jones or a Sharon Cooper, okay, all right, and there there's. And policy is being ripped out of your hands. I mean, as as an issue, there's not you know, and and you're living and dying by a president's tweets. Uh, you're frustrated. It's a, it's a grim future. You, you don't have much of one. Do you do you anticipate a wave of retirements like we saw at the at the congressional level um, before the 2018 midterms? A number of it wouldn't surprise Republicans me. Republicans retired. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. I think you might see Rob Woodall decide not to seek another term. He's he's got a target on his back. Sure. Uh, I think you're going to see uh, uh, some suburban figures in 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 the state legislature decide that it's up, the time their time is up, and it's time to move on. You you were already seeing that. I mean, I mean, you already saw that last. In, in this last cycle, you had uh, Wendell, Wendell Willard, right, uh, who's the chairman, who was the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, decided not to seek another term, and it's possible that he wouldn't have been elected. What do what do the twenty eighteen midterms? What does it portend for twenty twenty? Here in Georgia, it means that Republicans are going to spend the next two years very much on the defensive, 
trying not to make the misstep, trying not, you know, trying not to create an opening for Democrats to plow through in November 2020. That it's that uh, uh, we've seen this where this is this is, uh, we're recording this in the first week of Brian Kemp's administration. State of the state address was state two of days the state. Uh, it was, was it, it was Thursday. It was Thursday. Okay. It was the day before today. Uh, his he was just inaugurated on Monday. He was very very careful. I mean he 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 won he won his primary uh, uh, by 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 uh, by doing what every Republican has. Uh, uh, for the last uh, since 2002, uh, very running very hard to the right. You know, uh, the the idea has has been not to get outflanked on your right side. All right. And his first week in office, uh, our poll, which is just out a few days ago, has him at his approval rating at 37 percent, 20 percent in Metro Atlanta. That's those those are those are some very poor numbers. And the negative numbers, I believe. Were, we're over fifty. Oh, 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 absolutely! Right, right, right. So, so you have seen. I mean, you. It's going to be interesting to see whether Republicans think they can double down one more time on the intensity issue, and 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 crank out a win, or whether they're going to hit that ceiling. Mm-hmm. How big of a target does Senator David Perdue have? For 2020, oh, He's very, oh, huge, up for re-election, huge, 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 for two reasons. Number one, the state's cha- uh, changing, mm-hmm. uh, and everyone saw how close Stacey Abrams came. Uh, he's going to have to. He's going to have the Trump at the top of the ticket, uh, and uh, and he is a strong Trump ally. Uh, they're they're going to run as tandem, you know. So not not no possibility of, of no, daylight between. No, no, two. there's there's not going to be any daylight, you know. So so it's going to be a referendum on Trump. Trump's approval as of this week, thirty-seven percent approval in Georgia, down from from before the uh, before the November election. Mm. And this does come in in the midst of the the long longest government shutdown, in, right? In American and history. and where you have uh, talk of impeachment bubbling up, starting to bubble up, things are getting serious. Yeah, there, there was an obstruction. Uh, the most latest charge, uh, most latest, the latest charge. Uh, potential obstruction via on, Michael Cohen, right, on, on, on Trump's part, right? Yep. So you've got you've got some serious pressure that Washington Democrats are putting on Georgia Democrats, specifically Abrams. Mm-hmm. You know, Abrams has just finished a campaign. She did it well. She set up a national fund, fund funding network. She's got her people in place. Uh, she was up uh, in Washington just last week. Mm-hmm. Chuck Schumer, the the Senate Minority Leader. Wanted to talk to her. Wanted to persuade her. Talk her into the in, into running uh, against Purdue in in the Senate race. She's a she's really a gubernatorial oriented candidate, uh, and I'm not sure that she's given that up. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, she's giving herself until March to make some sort of decision. So a self imposed deadline. A self imposed de- deadline, and I think she's going to be under pressure to, to to move that up, because it's it's a it, it, it's it's going to take some serious money and 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 serious work here. Uh, down here in order to do that and 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 of course you've got some people who are other people who are interested in it and they have to you know you, you have to consider uh, uh, their positions as well so uh, yeah he's gonna have a heart he's gonna have a target and he knows this he mm-hmm. knows this his his he is not David Purdue is not nearly as weak as Kemp is in uh, in the north metro s- suburbs mm-hmm. he's still he, he's still he's still uh, got got better support there, but it's going to be it's going to be a tough race. Well, just uh, you know, it's it's almost four thirty. It's past four thirty here in Metro Atlanta, so we should probably think about maybe getting on the road. But uh, is there any uh, anything you're working on? Any story? Any any big project you're working on that you'd like to share? Oh, I'm trying to think of something. I'm not. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, Jim Galloway at loss for words. There's I don't. Your uh, I'm. I'm. I don't think that far ahead. I'm. I'm kind of a <laughs> a, a week ahead guy. Uh, uh, one thing I am interested in is, um, and we haven't talked about it at all, is is what Donald Trump has done to the evangelical vote, right? Uh, in nationally His and in Georgia. Yeah. Uh, you just this week, you had. Uh, 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 
a 56-year-old Mark DeMoss, has a PR office in Buckhead in Atlanta, uh, uh, religiously oriented. He has been uh, kind of a, he has been a, a, a top ed, aide to Billy Graham. He was Jerry Falwell's chief of staff back during the moral majority days. Okay. He's, he's closing his office. Interesting. Uh, he got into a fray about uh, three years ago uh, over Trump. Uh, uh, he's a Li Liberty University grad. He sits on its board. He, he sat on its board. And he objected to Jerry Falwell Jr.'s endorsement of Donald Trump, uh, saying that Trump's behavior didn't conform with the values of, of, a, of a Christian-oriented school. So you've got this, you know, and, and, and I've seen this elsewhere. You've got, you've got this, this breach that's developing between, in, in, among religious conservatives between, uh, between those who have, have uh, decided to have a transactional relationship with, with Donald Trump, uh, uh, their support in return for his, uh, for, for his judicial nominations, mm -hmm. And you have uh, another set of evangelical conservatives who are just appalled at his behavior and uh, uh, think it doesn't bode well for, for, for their people. So similar to the, the so-called Never Trump movement in the, in the uh, conservative movement. Right, right, uh, exactly. Movement. Yeah, There's so, a Never so Trump the, movement so the, within so the, question the Christian is, right. So, he, he, and, 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 and I had um, uh, Eric Erickson, Mm -hmm. um, WSB radio host, uh, who's also a, uh, has been a seminary student, you right? Know, and, and, he, and he raised a really interesting question uh, to me not not long ago, and that is that is is there a point where the evangelical voter is sated, is satisfied with with the deal that they cut with they got what they want, now can they abandon him? Uh, and that's, that's going to be a good question for 2020. Hmm. Well, I think the la latest numbers I saw were, were something close to 80% approval. Yeah, it uh, is still among look, Christian and, 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 and that's another thing is, is, is look, we are, we are on, and you know, I've, I've had to talk with, with high school students about this, is we are in for a rough 20 years because there is a demogra demographic transition afoot where, where your white Protestant uh, American is going to become the non-majority, a non-majority ethnic group mm -hmm. uh, could could hit us by what 20, 20, 30, 20, 40? S probably sooner here in Georgia, right? Than, than, than the national trend, but yeah. But yeah. And again, we get back to the, the that that rule that when when a, a group senses itself in decline, it doesn't it doesn't reach out and try to expand into new membership. It intensifies among its old its its current membership. Well, I I think you know. You in the in the political journalism field and, and sociologists will be busy for, for the next few decades. Well, not me. I'm I'm hoping to retire. Well, well. Nonetheless, we live in interesting times. Um, Jim Galloway, thank you very much on behalf of the Richard B. Russell Library at the University of Georgia. Really I'm appreciate it. I'm honored to it. do it. Thank you. We I'm sure we'll have you back.